Hello and welcome. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Jahan, and in this video, I've partnered up with Valoi to talk all about camera scanning and give you an in-depth tutorial of camera scanning with Valoi's setup and talk about some of the benefits of using this compared to something like a flatbed scanner. I actually made a video like this a few years ago where I was talking about scanning film with an Epson V800 and I compared Silverfast and Epson scan, but so much has changed since then. So I thought it would be time to give you all an update on this and tell you how I've changed my scanning routine with this new setup. So to begin with, I'm just gonna quickly explain what camera scanning actually is. So camera scanning means that you take a digital camera and you attach a macro lens to it. And then you put the setup on something like a copy stand or a really sturdy tripod. And then you simply take photos of your negatives while they are placed in a film holder that is illuminated from below so the negative is visible. Then once you've taken the photo of the negative, all you need to do is import it into something like Adobe Lightroom and either convert it yourself or use an editing software or a plugin like Negative Lab Pro, which will convert your negative image into a positive image and then something that you can work with. It's actually a very intuitive process and it's a lot faster than scanning with a flatbed scanner, but more on that later. So next up, I'm going to give you a run through of all the things that you need to scan your negatives with a camera scanning setup. Okay, so the things that you'll need for camera scanning are a digital camera, and ideally it has an interchangeable lens because the most important part is that you're gonna have to mount a macro lens. Now, it doesn't have to be a very fancy or modern one. You can also use a very old macro lens as long as it is still sharp and the lens isn't damaged in any way. Just make sure that it's a macro lens and it fits to your camera. Then you're gonna need something like a copy stand or a tripod. I use this very fancy copy stand by Novaflex and it mounts directly to your table. Or you could just use a tripod, which is what I used when I was traveling, and it's just important that you can actually attach your camera to it safely. Then you're gonna need um, a light panel. Um, you can use one of these like sketching pads, or if you want something more dedicated that fits perfectly to the scanning setup from Beloy, you can actually get one of these Releno, I think um, they're called Releno um, video lights, and that will actually slide right under into the Valoi um, 360 scanning setup, and that will make scanning really easy because everything is even more compact and you don't have to worry about external light sources. Of course, the most important part of this whole process is the Valoi 360 advancer and scanning rig. Now this consists of um, a base where you can set the different types of film masks for different film formats. It has the advancer, which makes um, the whole process very quick and very efficient. It has a duster to eliminate dust from the negative and a diffuser for your light source. And then you have these different types of film masks, which I already mentioned before, which will go for specific films. So if you're using medium format, you're gonna use the specific medium format film holder, or if you wanna do 35 millimeters, you use that one and so on and so forth. And then finally, I would recommend um, having something like uh, anti-static cloth, gloves, and most importantly, a mirror, and more on that later. Okay, so the first thing that we do to get started is just to insert our film through the duster, uh, if we have one, and then through the mask and into the take-up spools. Then the next thing that we want to do is set our camera approximately to a height where if you focus you have the frame more or less in focus. Now this doesn't need to be exact, the only thing that I would recommend is to center your first frame and then get out your mirror. And this is where it can be a bit tricky. You're gonna have to place your mirror just on top of the film holder and make sure that the lens and the aperture is quite in the center of your frame. If it isn't in the center, then I would recommend to um, adjust the feet and make sure everything is in focus. 
And the reason why we want to center the lens and focus on the outside rim of the lens is to make sure that the film plane is actually perfectly parallel to the lens. Uh, this will enable us to get uh, sharpness all across the negative and this is a really important step to make. So before we actually start uh, scanning, it's important to set the camera to manual settings. The things that you need to watch out for are the following. Set your ISO to the lowest possible natural ISO of your camera. And that's usually ISO 100. Some cameras go to ISO 50 or lower, but that's not the natural ISO. It's more of like a pulled ISO. So kind of like an artificial one. And we want to stay away from that. Then set your aperture to something between f5.6 or f11, depending on your camera lens configuration. Most lenses have like a sweet spot where the focus is perfect and if you do some research you'll usually find that out yourself or you can take some test photos and see uh, where the lens is the sharpest, especially on the corners and that's where it matters the most. Then the shutter speed is what you will work with in terms of adjusting the shutter speed to uh, give you the best results for the actual scanning process. Uh, what I like to do is I like to set my shutter speed so the histogram on the camera gives me a good reading. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's also important to kind of trust your eyes. So if the negative seems completely off, just readjust that. And then, uh, really important, use a remote control or the self-timer in the camera to expose the frames. Because if you don't actually um, use a timer or a remote or something like that, you're going to create too much... Um, wobble on the camera and you're going to probably just get shaky images. Finally, what I would recommend is to do your your final focus now and most cameras, uh, especially modern ones, if you do um, an manual focus on the camera, it will actually zoom in quite a bit and then you can really make sure that you have everything in detail. And once you're all set and you have your settings, comes really the easiest part of this entire workflow and that's just taking photos and advancing. So take a frame and advance to the next and take a frame and so on and so forth. It's really quite simple. Okay, so once you've got your files on the computer, you can open your image editing software. I'm using Lightroom Classic and in my Lightroom Classic, I have a plugin which is Negative Lab Pro. Now, using Negative Lab Pro is a huge advantage because it will make um, your entire workflow a lot more controlled and you will have much better outcome. But having said that, you don't actually have to do it with Negative Lab Pro. So the first thing that you do is you import um, your photos from your camera and then what you want to do is you want to do a white balance by pressing on anywhere within the frame which is not actually in the photograph so like where the sprocket holes are for example and then make an adjustment and then you'll see that your frame will change quite a bit then the next thing that you want to do is you want to crop the frame um, the good thing about using Lightroom is that I could crop the frame quite tightly now, but the adjustments that I make with Negative Lab Pro um, will only be applied to this frame. But if I want to add the sprocket holes afterwards, for example, I can just um, increase the crop again and then the sprocket holes would be there. So for now, this is the crop that I've made. And then all you got to do is open up Negative Lab Pro. If you're using a Mac, that's just Control N. So the first time you open Negative Lab Pro, you're going to get this window. And there are a few things that you can play around with and can select. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is obviously your source is from a digital camera. You could also use um, files coming from a scanner, for example. But since we're camera scanning, we're going to do this with a digital camera. Then the color model, um, there are different types. Um, for example, if you want to have the kind of look from a Nuritsu or a Frontier uh, scanner, then what you could do is you could select the Frontier color model and you can already see that there is a change in the color of the film. But usually what I do is I actually don't select any color model and I do a default pre-saturation and 
essentially that's all it. The edit in advanced, um, this is only something for later. So we have the selected and then all we do is press convert negative. So now that the negatives have been converted, we can play around a bit with the tones and there's a few settings that you can choose from. You know, you could kind of go for more like a cinematic look, um, a lab standard look, or something more linear, which is usually what I go for. And then what you do is you can play around with the exposure and you really have endless opportunities of things that you could do, um, play around whites, darks, lights, all sorts of things. You could add this kind of faded look, glow. It's really the, the opportunities are endless. Now the trick here is not to get too lost in it. And what I really like is that there is the amount of control that um, kind of gives you an authentic look of what the film actually looks like. So without adjusting too many things, you can get a good white balance. Without adjusting too many things, you can get a very neutral look to the film. And this film obviously is very neutral as it is, which is Portra 400. But essentially, um, if you want to get um, something that is more cinematic, you know, you can go for these and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go into too much detail with the colors and the mids and the highs. These are all things that you can play around with. You know, you could change the tint in that way and things like that, which is really, I guess, advantageous if there are small corrections that you might want to make or you're using a film that is uh, more complicated, something like a Sinister 800T where, you know, you maybe want to work with specific tones or something. When it comes to simple scanning of, of, let's say, normal color films, or even black and white films where there's even less issues with color, of course, um, that's essentially all that you have to watch out for. And then you just apply and that's it. And like I said, if you, if you wanted to actually make the frame bigger now, you could just go back to the crop and then, you know, just make that bigger. And then you'd have something here like these sprocket holes are visible now. And that's essentially camera scanning. And yeah, the next thing that you could do now is you could, um, you know, maybe straighten it up a bit and um, maybe print it out, hang it up on the wall, something like that, and enjoy your photos. So before I wrap up this video, I'd like to talk about some of the benefits that I really enjoy with working with a camera scanning setup. The thing that I like the most about camera scanning is that it's just, in general, extremely efficient, especially when you compare it to using a flatbed scanner. If you have your roll of film processed and in the best case it's not cut yet, then all you need to do is feed it into the film holder. And if you already have your tripod or your copy stand in a position where you know the sharpness is all right and all the settings are made, you can really, really take those photos very quickly and you can be very efficient with it. And that's a real game changer. Another factor that I really like is that if you have something like a full frame camera or something even crazier like a medium format uh, digital camera, what you can do is you can really take advantage of that sensor size. And that means the scanned negative will have a really high resolution and a lot of things that you can play with. And even if the camera isn't a full frame sensor, there are still so many excellent results that you can get from it, especially because you're really making the lens do the work. And that's such a big advantage to something like a flatbed scanner. Another thing that I really like is obviously using a digital camera, you can take photos and you probably should take photos in a raw format. And when you do these raw scans of your negatives, you can really take advantage of what a negative can give you in terms of tonality. Essentially, all this means that your image quality will greatly, greatly benefit. Now, personally, I don't think I would ever use a flatbed scanner anymore unless I was doing something like scanning a print that I made in the darkroom. But even there, I've done things like reproductions where I take a photo of a framed print and it's probably much better than scanning a print. So personally for me, I don't think I would want to use a flatbed scanner anymore now that I've been using this Valois setup for quite some time 
And there's two reasons for that. Now, the first reason is obviously the time factor. And that's even if you have like a big scanner like the Epson V800 where you can get three entire strips of uh, six frames of 35 millimeters, it's still such a hassle to, to work with, especially because these masks, those film holders, you know, they're out of plastic and I'm never quite sure about the height that you have to set. And then even if everything is right, you're still kind of scanning through that um, plastic cover. So you're putting another layer between the negative and the scanner. And that's just a layer that does, doesn't actually have to be there. I remember when I started shooting film the first time and I didn't work in the darkroom yet and I was just scanning my negatives. I remember how frustrated I got, not because of the bad results or anything, but just because I spent so much time just scanning. And I remember shooting like 10, 20 rolls of film, getting it all developed and then sitting there and thinking, I need to scan all of this now. And it, it's just such an uninspiring process because it takes so much time. But with um, a setup like the camera scanning setup, you completely eliminate that factor that you have to sit there for hours because you can actually get the scanning done so much quicker and you'll have a result on your screen much quicker. And then if you wanna do fine adjustments, then you'll have to put in the time for that. But you have to do that no matter how you get a scan or if you work in the dark room, it doesn't really matter. If you have one image that you really like, you're gonna put in the work um, unless you're someone who doesn't edit their photos at all. The thing that I didn't like about flatbed scanning as well was that I was always bound to the desk that I was working from wherever the scanner was and that I really couldn't take it anywhere, especially because the V800 was just, it's just a beast, it's huge, it's not portable at all. So I always had to work from that one place. When I started camera scanning, I noticed that like I could take the scanning setup wherever I went because if I was traveling with my photo gear, I usually had a tripod with me anyways. And if I was filming something, I'd take my digital camera. And the actual camera scanning setup from Veloy, it's so portable, it's so small, I could just put it into a really small case and take that with me. And then that meant that I could scan my negatives wherever I went. And that's a real plus side because if you, for example, have a lot of work that you want to do somewhere that you want to take with you or you're shooting on the road and then you are able to get your negatives developed, but you, for example, don't want to pay extra to get them scanned or you'd rather, you know, scan them yourself, then this is a real, real game changer because you can actually shoot and process all your work, even if it's film photography. Um, on the road and that's pretty cool. So this was camera scanning. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any more questions about the setup, about camera scanning or anything photo related, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much to Veloy for partnering up with me and making all of this happen. And yeah, take care and see you soon. Bye.